Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. It's me, Antonio, back with a, another video today. Under the sun. Woke up a little late today, but you know. Um, been maxing and relaxing for the last couple hours. Um, going over some work, you know, editing and all that jazz. Um, yeah, thinking about what I want to do this evening. You know, it's the first um, day of the week, so I may try and do some uh, some tarot. Um, yeah, move some things around in my room, trying to change the feng shui up a little bit. Got me a bunch of um, incense and candles and sage like that. So, you know, been building the atmosphere. Hopefully everyone is, um, you know, being safe and staying healthy out in this season of so-called virus. Um, but yeah, man, it's a pretty good sunny day. So I came, came out and sit out in the sun a little bit, you know, been in the house all day so I figured I might as well come and get some sun before the sun goes down. So this is actually my second time coming outside for some sun. I was out here earlier on my laptop uh, reconfiguring some things, settings. Um, but yeah, what I wanted to talk to you guys today is about, um, you know, more of your, your masculine and your feminine, your masculine, masculine and your feminine principles, uh, your mother and your father. Um, you know the where you draw your different archetypes of from uh like your your you know you pretty much you draw your strength from your your father and you draw uh another type of strength from your mother as well you know certain principles and guidelines and morals that um that help you through life and i was just sitting in my room my mom's birthday is going to be coming up in a couple of days so i was just thinking um you know just thinking about her a little bit and you know think about my dad it's probably been about a good five or six months since I talked to, talked to my dad. Probably about the same amount of time uh, talked to my mom. Um, but yeah, about the last time I talked to them, there were some interesting uh, some interesting conversations, you know. Um, you know, I saw my parents uh, go through a lot and how they built themselves up and lived their lives, their early lives and things like that, their midway points into the places and the people that they have become today. So, you know, um, I spoke about my parents in the past, you know, my mom, she, um, you know, had a, had a tough life. She went through a lot of hard things, but I see where the power of, you know, I see why they call it the strong black woman and things like that. I can see where the power of your emotions can totally, uh, take a uh, hold of you or overpower people or, um, you know, she's Pisces. So she is, um, you know, I always say had a heart of gold, you know, they're very dream uh, dreamy. They have vision. And they're kind of <laughs> interesting people. Um, but yeah, my mom is, um, you know, she follows her, her intuition. You know, she always had a, a pretty good survival instinct. Um, so, you know, one of those things that helped me cultivate, uh, you know, my, fem my feminine aspect or my, uh, my feminine quality or my feminine nature. My mom cooked a lot. You know, she uh, worked with the money that she had. You know, she would, she would order out every now and then Chinese food and pizza and things like that. But she cooked a lot. So I learned how to cook from watching my mom. My mom cleaned a lot. I had chores. I had to clean the bathroom. You know, again, clean my room. You know, <laughs> sometimes clean the kitchen or even her room, the living room. Me and my sister uh, split chores. I always take out the trash. So these were like different principles and things that, you know, people will, people will learn later in life, you know, when they finally decide they want to go off to the military at high school at 18 or 21 or something like that. These were things that I were learning at five, six, seven, eight years old, how to, you know, take care of your chores and your tasks. Thus today, you know, when people enter the house, you know, they always come to my room and they're like, man, you know, you have the cleanest room in this house. <laughs> It looks the best, it smells the best, and it's always like that wherever I go, wherever I tend to settle down in my lifetime. There's just uh, different things that I learned from my mom, you know, no matter how harsh, no matter how harsh or strict or different kinds of ways of structures that she had set up. She helped me learn how to take care of myself and take care of my surroundings. I eat cooking clean for myself and, you know, uh, trying to master my emotional intelligence. Because again, she was very intuitive. Uh, just so happy she had a rough life. You know, so, you know, um, last, you know, as I got older, you know, I, I guess my aura on my third eye started to overpower her. So, um, you know, I'm my father's son. So, you know, he is, um, you know, he is doing his thing. He's 
I'll, tell, I'll definitely tell you about the, you know my father, my, my, my masculine aspect. But yeah, I definitely learned a lot from my mom. Um, in fact, I'm uh, cancer rising, so <laughs> let me say the real you. <laughs> um, but yeah, man. So uh, I am indeed very emotional and intuitive myself. Something that I didn't really learn to focus on until like my early thirties. But yeah, very interesting times. You know, I was very aware and uh, perceptive of things growing up. Um, you know, always stayed up late, you know, insomnia, all those types of things. You know, I like to take care of people. And, you know, that's 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 just me. And when I don't feel like being bothered, I don't feel like being bothered. You know, my mom's the same way. You know, cancer rising again. That's a crab. You know, the crab has a shell for a reason. Um, and it travels uh, with its home on its back, you know. You know, imagine a person walking around with a backpack all the time. You know, that's that's Cancerian energy. Uh, that person doesn't it can settle down anywhere they want. Um, but you know, home is where the heart is. The family is the most important thing. I think crabs. Um, I think crabs. Uh, they produce by eggs. You know how how sensitive eggs are. So you know. Um, but yeah, that's that's my mom. You know, my mom is pretty. She's gonna be. I think she's gonna be turning fifty. So happy birthday to moms. You know, I'll I'll get a chance to talk to her when I get a chance to talk to her. And then of course my father. You know, the interesting thing about my father is I always looked up to my father as like one of, um, you know, my favorite role models and and things like that. Not that there was any ever any pressure or anything like that or. And I would never put myself in competition with my dad, but we've always had like conversations over the years. Like when I was younger, my dad would come pick me up. I would be quiet. And I was younger and things like that. And then I was I was not able to express myself and things like that, you know, in ways of communication and going back and forth and talking with people. Plus you learn, you know, I'm coming from one side of the coin when I'm in the hood getting raised by all my ghetto aunties and things like that. And you can't talk while grown folks are talking and things like that. So you go to the other side of the world, <laughs> Well, my dad's family is all, you know, my dad, you know, he, he puts on, a, you know, he wear, he does not wear his heart on his sleeve like that, although he can, you know, he can be the quietest person in the room or the loudest person in the room. Uh, very suave fellow, um, had various life experiences in the military and things like that. Um, you know, popular nerd in high school, very um, physically talented fellow. Um, but you know, people go through phases. You know, you can be that. We can be. You start out that way, or off one way, and then end off a completely different person. Like my dad started going to church, uh, like his late twenties. I think as soon as he hit thirty, he started to going to uh, going to church a lot. He got promoted through the church very fast. He was in you know just participating in multiple aspects of the church. Was like the pastor's favorite deacon and things like that. He was friggin' everything. Um, you know, and then, of course, he uh, retired a few years ago, went up to Alabama, purchased some land, um, had a house built, and now he's going more into spirituality there. He's trying to ground himself in Alabama. Uh, from my understanding, again, there's a lot of deep ritualistic, um, you know, roots in my family. It goes back a long, uh, you know, lineage goes, goes goes back a long way. There are different uh, tribal aspects and elements and things like that. Uh, Deep-rooted uh, aspects in my family. A lot of my um, people on my father's side are deeply, deeply melanated. A lot of dark-skinned people. A lot of Bahamian roots. Uh, a lot of African roots. Um, a lot of Islanders. Uh, you know, my mom's side is a lot of uh, Americanized Islanders. Uh, but yeah, for the most part, you know, um, yeah, just just watch them do things. I've seen both my parents um, at their work environments. You know, my mom had situations where she would have to uh, take me to work with her at like 12 midnight. <laughs> I would be with her at her job, sleep on like a bench or something like that. Um, these are like gas stations. You know, she, she would work at a gas station and things like that. And she didn't always have bad jobs. Like she, she, she's had good jobs. You know, she's went to school for cosmetology and things like that. So she knew how to use her... Again, her uh, her instincts and a way to try and maintain survival. She did very, uh, you know, various things. Uh, some were considered underhanded. Some were considered, you know, uh, you know, again, you do what you have to do. She made some 
good choices in life uh not bad decisions but you know women are not meant to lead so you know being in the end uh, the my my situation if, I, if you've already um familiar with my situation and things like that being in a single parent household but you know at the same time my father was very active i've always had a um you know very personal relationship with my father like hanging out with my father on the weekends and things like that or anytime i would see him he would like uh give me money and things like that you know it was pretty fun we had father-son hangouts at Barnes and Nobles or, you know, sitting down. Uh, um, my father used to, when I used to, one thing my father used to do when I used to visit him, we used to, like, our favorite thing we used to is to, like, eat and go out to, like, record stores or, like, arcades or things like that, like Virgin, where Virgin was open, you know, FYE. We used to do that type of stuff, like, go out to Barnes and Nobles and just hang out and chill, eat ice cream and stuff like that, come home later. 10 at night he, he that's where i learned i actually i've watched my first anime from my dad i probably was like four or five years old watching like ninja scroll and akira and um you know all these different types of animes and things like that man ghost ghost in a shell but um what's the other what's more fist of the north star all the old school stuff not, not none of the new stuff that these kids are watching nowadays you know? um but yeah, mom, but yeah, my father, my father was was a very masculine fellow. Um, you know, he settled down, you know, uh, and you know went from this um, big muscular dude, you know, uh, living in Miami, uh, that he used to always have to watch all his friends get locked behind jail and beg him to let them make phone calls, you know, because he's a CEO, you know, the same guy that used to run into the rock at the gym you know, lift weights and things like that, and, you know, try try to get dinner, uh, you know, come to the house for, like, family dinner and things like that, but, you know, um, very good guy, very spiritual guy, he's now, he's now on his, his Jedi thing, <laughs> he's a Shafarim now, he's become so spiritual, I sent him my, uh, I sent him a gift a while back, it was just some Palo Santo, um, but, yeah, he, um, from my understanding, he enjoyed it. And the crazy part is, the last conversation that I had with my dad, even though I looked up this man my entire life, um, you know, I can't quote him exactly, but I'll always remember this three-hour-long conversation that we had. And this was like, what, six months ago? And he was just telling me that, um, you know, he think, he think that, uh, like, he's very proud of me. Like, he's in awe of me. Like, he's telling me that I surpassed him um, when... Um, he was my age, and um, he's every time he like he thinks about me or he sees something that I'm doing, even though he may not agree with it or it may make him have a second thought or inspiration. He's like he's very proud. Yeah, I don't think that he thinks because it was it was an interesting conversation. And then like immediately after that, <laughs> immediately after that, um, you know, my whole dark night of the soul situation was was I was still going through that whole situation. So karma and like end cycles was just coming in all at once but yeah you know he was like you know um you know i definitely look up to you and and i you know i, I told him I'm like you know i gave him a whole lecture I, you know it was it was interesting it was my first time like it came off as a lecture i lectured my dad for like 15 minutes half hour <laughs> just um, you know, telling him that, you know, to watch out for Corona and, you know, it's very dangerous out there. He don't need to be working in, and, and, you know, these jail facilities anymore, you know, he should try doing different jobs, um, like courthouses and things like that. You know, he actually started getting better. He started doing, um, you know, security at schools and things like that. But he actually, he, you know, I spoke to him again and he took my advice. He started telling you know he started talking i mean you know i always look forward to lectures from my dad so i just felt that strange at 33 or 34 years old that i was lecturing this man that was 20 years older than me who was actually me in the future i'm explaining to him that he's me in the future and i'm him in the past but this is the present right now <laughs> and these are the conversations that i have with my father like i would not i was not able to have these conversations with him when i was younger like the knowing so you express your feelings and you learn your feelings from your mother, your intuition, but you learn your knowledge. Men have to know things because we have to do things. Um, but yeah, I learned a lot, a lot of stuff from my father, man. And, um, you know, he didn't really have to discipline me. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of talking. 
three hour, hour and a half long lectures every time you do something you ain't supposed to be doing. Then on top of that, having sisters. <laughs> I have one, one half sister and two stepsisters. So just imagine how much talking I had to hear. <laughs> But yeah, he's, his birthday is 10 days before mine. So, you know, the same sign. Go figures. He's a Libra. I'm a Libra. I swear it's like Anakin and uh, <laughs> Luke Skywalker. Uh, but, um, yeah. It's interesting times, interesting concepts. But that's where I get a lot of my masculine from. And it's not something that I ever felt like I had to live up to. It was just one of those archetypes. You know, we look to a lot of things uh, to help inspire us, whether it's religion, whether it's to celebrities, whether people are going to, you know, you have a whole clan of people that's going to follow and track someone on social media just to see what, what this person is thinking about this day. What is this person doing today? What did this person react to today? So the whole world's watching me now. <laughs> I'm going to have to start calling y'all out, you know. You got to do that, right? David versus Goliath. You know, you want to pillow talk and all these other things and... You know, whole, all these conversations and everyone wants to try to act so transparent, but no, no one's really naked out in the open. You know, the God Shiva, another prototype, just like Jiva, Jesus or Buddha. Uh, matter of fact, Buddha came from uh, Shiva. Um, you know, Allah, all these different ar archetypes. Shiva was a God. You know, describing his f physical appearance, you know, people would think of him as a drunken madman who, you know, was just had crazy spirits follow him all the time. He walked around with his shirt off. He was multi-talented. Uh, he didn't sit around, uh, you know, coming up with theories and philosophies and calculating things all day. His, his theory was doing things, walking the path, method, science, <laughs> not, not laying around pillow talking, um, you know, with dudes or chicks all day online. Um, but he actually walked the path, you know, dreadhead guy, you know, head coverings, you know, had his chains on, you know, we were tribal people back then, had his necklaces and jewels, you know, he had no shirt on, he just had pants on, he walked around with his trident, you know, he always had his trident, which represented the Holy Trinity. Um, but again, you know, I leave that up to y'all to do y'all research, you know, you can't, you can't judge people off what they see, you know, we y'all, most people were raised on white Jesus, this white dude with blue eyes and long hair walking around on a white trench coat or a white gown and people don't understand that these were illustrations come up by great poets and authors and reverberators like myself <laughs> people like aristotle oscar wilde michelangelo donatello these were jobs these were minor side projects that were commissioned to them and people are taking these things to heart when there are real deities real gods that have charted the stars and walk the stars um, these the same stars that showed the three wise, wise men how to fi find these fake figures like Jesus Christ. Um, but yeah, Shiva was a very interesting person. People, you know, originally thought he was a, a was a woman, but when you actually research the religion, you realize it was a man, it was a, the masculine figure, <laughs> who was pretty much rejected by everyone else. He was re rejected by his community. He was rejected by the gods because. He was, you know, he was he was just being him, man. He, he didn't really follow rules. He was an immoral person, which makes sure immortal children are able to live happy, divine lives, and people are able to enjoy the laughter of children because they are immoral. They don't have a care in the world. They don't have rules or things bounding them. You know, we may perceive that we do when we put pillows around a child or, block, or barricade them, but their mind is not even thinking about these boundaries and these barriers and these things that people try to throw and label them um but yeah he was very you know an interesting god kind of like hercules he was a god but he was you know cast out he wasn't even really cast out he was just like you know what i'm out of here and he just did whatever he wanted to do. you say gods are not supposed to drink well i'm gonna drink but in other religions you have ambrosia the drink of the gods what you think the drinks was <laughs> it was fermented fruit and the fruit of the gods the tree of life you know, all these different interpretations that people don't know about. You know, all we do is crunch numbers behind a desk and then we, we, we move from somewhere. It's like, it's just like what somebody was saying about moving one people from one slave master to another slave master. You know, instead of letting uh, the system enslave you, you're going to enslave yourself by not getting the full knowledge. <laughs> you're just going to step out in the wilderness and step on a bunch of glass. 
Um, but yeah, you know, Shiva, and then another thing about Shiva, he realized, you know, people were, you know, foolish. You know, people did, you know, they tried to, you know, imitate him. You know, people wanted to be his followers and things like that. People wanted to see what he was doing. But everybody wanted to try to do what he was doing. You know, they would, you know, him and his followers or people that decided to follow him would watch him go to go through a village. And, you know, after they saw him perform all these wondrous, uh, you know, miracle things like Jesus did, you know, they, they saw him do all these crazy things and they saw him set, sit down in a pub and uh, take a drink of alcohol. And they was like, wow, we can't believe this God, you know, this this deity amongst men is down here drinking. If he, we can drink it, if he, we can, if he can drink it, we can drink it. So they started drinking too, his disciples, because they saw him drinking. And he saw this, so he went, when they got to the next village, instead of going to the pub and getting the alcohol, he picked up a big cauldron of molten lava and drank it. You think they wanted to drink after him, monkey see, monkey do? Just because you see somebody else doing it, now you want to do it? Or you want to try to criticize this person? Like you can do it? If you can do it, do it. And you have to be able to accept the karma and the consequences that come with that. But yeah, you know. He accepted people for what they was, you know, even his devoted followers, even even his lovers, you know, the people that hurt him the most, the things that he had to lose uh, to experience a, a certain form of humanity. You know, he had to learn what women were like so much to the point to where he became a half man, half woman, not a woman. He didn't turn himself to a woman. <laughs> he wasn't a transvestite. He was just so in tune and becoming one uh, and one and becoming in tune with oneness that he experienced, he fused himself with his, his lover so that, you know, they could, you know, have that union with each other, experience each other fully. So he, you know, that's another concept of himself when he walked around as a man that fully stood in his, his masculine divinity and also stood in his full feminine power. I mean, you gotta know, you gotta know women to please women. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta know men to please men. <laughs> it's like, you can't, you gotta have balance. But, um, you know, people, again, don't understand the certain, you know, certain rules and guidelines, but I'm not ruled and bound by anyone. So there's not going to come to anyone that's not going to come to my front porch and spank me and tell me to put on a shirt. <laughs> like, really? Adam didn't roam a garden with a business suit on or a hoodie on. Um, but, yeah, you know, just a short story on, um, you know, so I had to skip over Buddha because I can't even maintain my peace. People will try to attack your peace. You have to jump over, over Buddha and go straight to the to the real God, Shiva, who had six arms, eight arms, and is still growing more. He's multitasking. He's multi talented. He can do a, a, a bunch of different things at once. People model Ganesha after Shiva. You know, and, and Ganesha is uh, like the god of abundance, prosperity, and luck. You know, earth energy, divine, and things like that. Uh, multi talented, but um, you know. Again, um, you know, if people can't get their mind off uh, Jesus and things like that and the church, uh, I mean, the church is going away. I mean, we might as well, you know, call it what it is. It's probably going to be a lot of people talking about <laughs> the Bible and church online. I mean, unless they can get some, you know, there's always things uh, that, that, that makes way. I mean, even movie theaters. Movie theaters are not going to go away. They're just going to be have to be built and structured in a different way to where they're able to maintain social distancing. You ever seen the mega structure movie theaters they have in China where it sits like a thousand people? They're gonna have to change it and structure in a different way. So um, it's not gonna just people sitting at home online on their streaming service. People that wanna go wanna go out, um, whether it's six feet social distance or whatever whatever the case may be. I went I went and experienced IPIC a year ago and it was an interesting experience it's like a theater where it, act, it actually has sofas in there and it's not, not it's not cheap it's, it's, it's expensive you'll spend a hundred dollars trying to go to ipic because you also and you sit down and you have actual restaurant meals like you can order nachos and you can order burgers and you can order whatever you want pizza and things like that enchiladas all types of stuff that don't look fast food made <laughs> So it was a pretty pretty interesting experience, and this is more like eight um, eight foot distancing. You have your own sofa that you can lean back or sit on, and it has speakers on the side. You know, you order your it has a table right in front of your chair where you can just sit and order for you and whoever you with. And it was a pretty interesting experience, and you know, even though this, it probably only was able to seat maybe like twenty five, fifty couples. The mo the money that they made makes up for it. So instead of people spending you know twenty thirty dollars a visit 
just for one person on the, to go see a movie, they go get a movie ticket and buy some popcorn and a drink. How about you, that person goes to IPIC instead and spend $50 but you're not gonna do that. You're gonna, you're gonna, people are gonna go out and be with each other. So it's always gonna be couples. So you might as well imagine it's just the money's coming in. And these are just things that, you know, I just come and have coming off the top of my head. So I have a vision for, you know, what I wanna um, see and what I wanna do in the future. But you know, it all comes with time. Um, you know, there was always gonna be judgment, but I reserve the right to hold judgment or class myself. <laughs> try to stay out of the loop but you know sometimes you peek your head in and you hear people pillow talking and things like that I'm gonna keep using that phrase pillow talking because you know there's a difference between the podcast and the pillow talking your voice sounds like you're just whispering and you um not not admitting the, the feminine quality of the conversation that you have you notice that I've been coming on my videos man trying to get my skin a little bit better but no, it's gonna come with time. I'm gonna go get me some exfoliants, right? What what these fem what these females and these feminines be using on y'all faces? Cause they're not it's not just women. There's a market for uh, men's products as well. That's why we have deodorant from uh, for men, right? You know, so there has to be someone that has to develop men's products, just like there has to be someone that develops toilet paper and toothpaste. You know, why not market to women? Women are the ones that sell money, anyways. Their deodorant is stronger anyways. It has to be because we don't want stinky women. So, of course, their products are going to be vast and stronger. It would behoove any business person, man or woman, which is why we don't bring gender into business that often, to um, have a certain niche or market, market your products to a certain culture. So you can practice analytics and numbers and a certain time of day to post something or what group of people or what ethnicity of people and all these types of things that you want to you want to hook up and link with, but at the end of the day, you got to know your tar target audience. Um, if your target audience is going to be gamers, you know that that niche is oversaturated. But, you know, you shouldn't let that stop you. If you know that women are mostly the ones that stimulate the economy, you know, men, men built the world and women work the jobs for them. And they spend the most money to help relieve stress. If you know this, <laughs> why not invest more in women? Create women products for things that women can enjoy so that they can spend their money. Um, it's not hard. There's no such thing as magic. Once you break down these sciences and, that, sciences, and that's the thing. People want you to be stuck and thinking that it's poof. People even misjudge themselves. People don't. People think you know of aliens and things like that, and they have their doubts about it and things like that. Or even just certain things. If you go into a, a house that's dark that has no lights in there, it's gonna be a dark house. You're gonna. It's gonna be a mystery. It's gonna be new to you. You're gonna be afraid of it. You don't want know what's in the house. There's no. There's darkness in there. There's no light in there. But it's just a house. You have to explore it. <laughs> but that's all I wanted to talk to you guys about today. I am. Um, done ranting. I think I hit my goal for today. Um, wanted to get on really quick and make this a quick, um, you know, a really quick, uh, video, but it turned out to be a pretty long video. I got my rose quartz. Got to have the healing, right? Got to keep a loving energy, a loving aura. So hopefully you guys enjoyed my rant after be being gone for a while, but um, yeah, it was definitely some good uh, lecturing, you know, my good spiritual lecture. You know, sometimes spirit just takes hold of me. We got a whole class. But, um, you know, it's just the, it's the desperation of it all. You have the hyenas uh, or, you know, these you have these biz businessmen or these, you know, people that want you to be on their team so bad. <laughs> it's like hyenas uh, <laughs> snapping at a, a a bad red bone as she's walking through the club, right? It's like, <laughs> man. But, um, you know, we'll get there. We'll sort it out. You know, LeBron has to do his, you know, his, his delegations and figure out what, what his contract, what he wants his contract to look like. You feel me? <laughs> uh, but, yeah, that's it, man. Talk to you guys later. Hopefully, um... You're getting your business done, you're practicing self-care, and you're taking advantages of 
every opportunity you have to voice your opinion and give your insight. Peace.